everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna to talk more about composite functions, but this time we're specifically talking about how to find the domain of a composite function. So this is a very common issue that students have with this because it's a little bit tricky. But basically we're often given two functions, f and g. We're asked to find the composite function, but also find the domain. So let's go ahead and get into how to do this. First, how to find the domain of a composite function. Our first step, identify domain restrictions of the inner function. Remember composite functions, we have an outer function and an inner function. So first we look at the domain of our inner function. And let's go ahead and do this example. So the domain of our inner function is what? We have no restrictions here. This domain is all real numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. Okay, all real numbers. Second, find the composite function. So basically I'm evaluating this. I'm plugging g of x into f and I can simplify it and yeah, do that stuff. So I'll go ahead and plug g of x into f so I have f of, well, what is g of x? 2x minus 3. And we did this a lot in the last video. That's why I'm going to move a little quickly when I'm doing this in this video because we did this in the last video. This video, we're just focusing on domain. So basically, I square this because I'm plugging this into my f function. So 2x minus 3 is getting squared. All right, there's a shortcut for this if you know how to do that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it. a squared is my first term, 4x squared plus 2ab, which is negative 12x, let's see, plus b squared, that is 9, okay? So now where are we at? We found the composite function, we identified domain restrictions of this composite function. Are there any domain restrictions? In this case, there are not. So my domain for this function is all real numbers. Where should I put that? And that means what? We include both restrictions. Well, we don't have any restrictions either way. So our final domain is all real numbers as well. And the reason I started with this example is because it's the simplest of all the cases, right? We have two functions that both have a domain of all real numbers. So any composition function we make using these two functions will also have a domain of all real numbers, okay? So in general, if you have polynomials, quadratics, linear functions, anything like that, and you're composing, domain will be all real numbers. It's other stuff where we have problems, and we'll get into those, those examples right now. All right, let's go ahead and try another example. We're gonna find f of g of x, and we're gonna find its domain as well. So think about it. The reason we identify the restrictions of the inner function first is because this inner function happens first, right? I plug in a number, it has to go through this inner function, then it goes through the outer function. Right? So if there's some number where this is not defined or where this has issues like, you know, negatives under a square root or zeros in the denominator, like this case, right? If I plug in zero to this function, it's undefined. So zero is not in the domain of this function. So that means I cannot plug zero into f of g of x as well. And that's why we do this because every number has to go through the inner function first. So if there's some values being excluded from the domain and the inner function, we need to exclude them from the composite function as well. Hopefully that makes sense. So what are the restrictions? We've just said it, x cannot equal zero. Now let's go ahead and find this composite function. So I'm plugging g of x into f. Let's see, what does that give me? So I replace, everywhere I see x, I replace with two over x, right? So I have two over x over two over x plus three. Right, I'm plugging g of x into f. So what does this equal? I gotta do a little algebra. Let's see, what algebra can I do? I'll take away this equal so I can multiply top and bottom by something. And there's multiple things you can do. You can combine these, that's one thing you can do. I'm gonna multiply by x over one over x over one. And the reason is because that's gonna get rid of all my fractions, basically. Look how this works. x over one over x over one. That gets rid of this x, I'm left with two at the top. x over one times, and again, this is parentheses, so this is going to everything. x over one times two over x, that just gives me two, my x's cancel again, plus x over one time, uh, times three, that gives me three x. And this is really my final function. I have two over three x plus two. So again, I have what? I have potentially have zero in the denominator. So I set the denominator equal to zero, right? And I solve for x. And those are the values that I'm excluding from the domain of this composite function along with x cannot equal zero, okay? So let's go ahead and set this equal to zero. Two plus three x equals zero. Subtract two from both sides. I have three 
x equals negative 2. Now I can divide both sides by 3. And I have x equals negative 2, which means what? In our domain of our final composite function, x cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal negative 2 over 3. So if I were to write this in interval notation, it may get a little crazy here. In interval notation, I have domain goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2 thirds. Then it starts back up at negative 2 thirds, not including negative 2 thirds. And it goes up to what? to zero, then it starts back up at zero, and it goes all the way up to infinity. So this is the domain in interval notation, and it may be acceptable as well just to write x such that x does not equal zero and x does not equal negative two over three. All right, let's do one more example. I really encourage you to pause the video, try it on your own. We're gonna find f of g of x and its domain. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we identify domain restrictions of the inner function. Our inner function is g of x, we have a square root with x under it, which means what? Everything under the square root we set greater than or equal to zero. We don't wanna have any negatives under our square root. So I'm gonna do this off to the side, x minus one greater than or equal to zero. So I add one to both sides of the inequality and I have x is greater than or equal to positive one. So this is my restriction from the domain, okay? So whatever my final composite function is, and whatever its domain is, it has to include this restriction as well as any other additional restrictions from the domain of the composite function itself. So now what do we do next? Find the composite function. So I plug g of x into f. And what does that give me? Well, let's see. I plug square root of x minus 1 into this x. So I have square root of x minus 1 squared plus 5. Square root and square root, those kind of cancel each other out, right? I'm left with x minus 1 plus 5. x minus 1 plus 5. Hopefully I'll see how those cancel each other out. Now I can combine these like terms. And I'm left with what? x plus 4. And this is the most common mistake made on these kind of problems is people ignore that first step. They look at this, they say, oh, linear function. It's clear that the domain is all real numbers, and they put all real numbers as their answer, but that's not true. Remember, when we plug in an input, this is a composite function, so that input has to go through the inner function first. This inner function is restricted to values such that x is greater than or equal to 1, so that means my composite function as well has to be restricted. So the domain is x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. That's one way to write it. My curly brackets are a little ugly, sorry about that. If I want to do interval notation, I do a bracket, right? Bracket, because we're including negative one all the way up to infinity. All right, last example, just to get some more practice, I encourage you to pause it, try it on your own. It's very similar to the first example. So let's go ahead and do it. First thing we do, what? We identify the domain restrictions of the inner function, right? And again, we're finding f of g of x as well as its domain. This is what we're finding as well as its domain. So our inner function is g, so we're going to look at what domain restrictions we have here. Well, we have x's in the denominator, so I can set my denominator equal to zero, and that would be the value that I'm excluding from the domain. So when x equals 2, I get zero in the denominator. So for this domain of g of x, I have x such that x does not equal positive 2, okay? Now I can move on to finding the composite function. I'm plugging this function in to f, so I have 1 over x over x minus 2 plus 3. This may get a little messy. And again, there are many different ways you can do this as far as simplifying it. You could combine these. What I'm personally going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by, let's see, x minus 2 over 1 over x minus 2 over 1. This is just another form of 1, right? So I'm still allowed to do this. This is legal. And what this will do is get rid of that denominator. So Let's go ahead and do this. x minus 2 times 1, that's just x minus 2 up top. x minus 2 cancels with this x minus 2. I'm left with x, x minus 2 times 3. So I have plus 3 times x minus 2. Make sure to be real careful with the parentheses and stuff. This 3 has to go to everything. So I can simplify this again. Maybe I'll rewrite it down here. x minus 2. I'm basically putting this 3 in. That's my next step, is multiply this 3 out. So I have 3x minus 6. So on the bottom, I have x plus 3x minus 6. And on the top, I still have x minus 2. 
and I just have one more step, and that's to combine the like terms, and this is my function, f of g of x. I have 4x minus 6 in the bottom. So what is the domain of this function? Let's see. And you could even factor out a 2 from the bottom. Will that help at all? That'll leave you with 2x minus 3. No, that won't help you at all, so I wouldn't even really bother. The domain of this function, I basically set the denominator equal to 0, right? Same as we've been doing. 4x minus 6 equals 0. I solve for x. I can add 6 to both sides, and I get 4x. Hopefully y'all can see this. Equals 6. Now I can divide both sides by 4. And I'll rewrite this up here. I get x equals 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So x cannot equal 2 because that's what we restricted from our inner function. And from our final composite function, we have a restriction of x cannot equal 3 over 2. So our final domain, if I even have room to write it, where can I write it? I'm going to put it in this box. Domain x such that x does not equal 2 and x does not equal 3 over 2. Hopefully y'all can read that. Sorry, it's a, got a little messy, but... All right, that's our last example. I hope this video helped. If it did, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Leave a comment with any questions. See you in the next video. Keep making those brain gains.